I remember when I was a kid, my dad used to have these radio controlled planes. They would zoom all over the place. And then he ended up getting us these cars that would go around on a track. And that was pretty cool on Christmas morning, opening presents like this. And now I'm 31 years old. I'm gonna go do it as an adult. So tonight's event, we're going to a racetrack where it's the opening night for the season. I didn't even know there's seasons for these things, but apparently there is. So we're gonna go check it out, meet the people in the community who are into this and see what they enjoy. So let's go check it out. We'll go see what radio controlled race cars are like and what we can learn from the community. know the gentleman that I'm here visiting. <laughs> Jason and I go way back. I didn't even know he was involved with this before tonight. So tell me about what you do here. I today. direct the races and help with their online presence. Very cool. And race. This is a remote control car racing. Uh, a lot of the people here are anywhere from eight to into their 60s or 70s. Oh, wow. So we've got a, a pretty large group of people. Right. On Friday nights, we run oval racing, so the cars look like modifieds, late models, sprint cars. And then on Saturdays, we change the track over, and there's jumps, landings, basically supercross nice. with remote control cars. Okay. Uh, for us, it's a very close-knit group of people. Everybody's welcome, but everyone kind of ends up being friends. They loan out equipment, uh, they lend out cars, they help each other. We all hang out on practice nights, we go to dinner after races, and it's honestly kind of a, a really neat niche in the community here in Decatur, Illinois. Uh, doing our best to get the word about it, because as far as racing goes, you can't beat this Absolutely. for the money. This is probably the closest, most affordable type of racing there is that a 12-year-old can race against a 60-year-old father and son. Calvin. That's, that's, that's Calvin, that's right. Calvin Hot Shoe Crawley. David Crawley, okay. who is uh, well-known in the area for running uh, Modified. His dad's actually a very successful full-scale race car driver, and he brings them out here. It's kind of their winter hobby together. They can race against each other. You're telling me basically that these are like legitimate race times. This is very similar software and tracking technology that even the big race teams are using. NASCAR, World Superbike, whatever it is, we use transponders and AMB systems just like they do. Wow. Uh, it'll come out, tells you how many laps they turn, their fastest laps, top five laps. When the computer is actually running, it tells me how many seconds are between drivers. That's so cool. Who's leading? It is real time tracked all the way through the races. So. Yeah, way more high tech than it probably was 20 yeah. years ago. And all the cars actually are just like real race cars. There's spring adjustments, rebound, compression. Everything is fully adjustable on these cars. Wow. So it is just like a downsized real race car. Nice. <laughs> That's so cool. What got you inspired to do this type of an event? Uh, it's cold, actually. <laughs> so in, in the summer, I race motorcycles, go-karts, whatever it may be growing up. And then now that we get into the winter, Obviously, I'm not going to go outside and play in the dirt or on the asphalt, so we all come in here and have fun on the carpet. We actually don't race very much in the summer due to the heat, but any time from fall to the beginning of spring, this is where you'll find a lot of guys that actually do full-scale racing that come out to stay warm and hang out with their buddies. Excellent. Everything's adjustable. I can adjust it how much speed, how quick things react, how far it steers, how much brake I have, how much throttle I have. I can run... 50 different cars from this one controller. It's all adjustable. Chase half a second behind Frank. Sean half a second behind Chase. There's a 374 by Chase. Frank 16, Chase 16, Sean 16. Do the winner. Yeah. <laughs> 
Thank you. <laughs> what was the uh, the major skill of this in order to be the winner? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of luck, a little bit of skill. This is a lot of luck. This is a lot of luck. A lot of it has this class no due to the wheels be. being out in the open, the cars being so light, and them almost being square shaped. They get out of control very easily. In this class, honestly, it takes a lot of sportsmanship and a lot of give and take. At any moment, if you get next to somebody and one of you pulls the throttle too fast, the car kicks sideways and you're taking you and your buddy out. So a lot of it is about making a good decision at the right time to get a clean run in and not messing up your friends. Uh, it's hard to tell, but there's a lot of times where if you get into somebody, uh, you both actually let off the throttle and you wait for each other. If you wreck somebody, you wait for them. If they wreck you, they wait for you. There's a lot of sportsmanship involved, especially in that class with how crazy the cars are to drive. So, <laughs> And then is that the fastest class of cars to drive? That is the fastest class of cars to drive here tonight. Um, in the summertime, we run them with larger motors that are about twice as powerful. Wow. And they are unruly, but <laughs> it makes it very, very exciting. So. Cool. And what has been the biggest challenge for putting on a community event for you? The biggest challenge for putting on a community event is honestly getting people in this area interested in having a, a hobby. And you try to explain it to somebody and they don't understand. You actually have to try to get someone to physically come here and see what it's about and usually they get hooked. But actually having an activity to join, to enjoy with each other is, is awesome. Right on. Uh, Sean, a uh, gentleman standing behind you over there, he's actually probably one of the biggest helpers in the community. He takes a lot of people's cars home, he takes kids' cars home, cool. helps set them up. Uh, anyone that's kind of disadvantaged, whether it just be knowledge or physically, he really gets very hands-on with everyone to help people out in the community. And that's kind of one of the neat things about coming here, is a lot of people really do reach out to kids, other adults, whatever it may be, to lend everyone a hand. What's been the easiest thing about putting on an event in the community? Uh, the easiest part of putting on an event in the community, having fun. Right like, I, I don't know, how, it doesn't get much easier than showing up somewhere that is, for the most part, low stress, low cost, and easy to have a great time. And the good thing that I've found about people that actually enjoy a hobby together is in general, they just have fun together. You're not going somewhere and wondering, well, I wonder what they like. I wonder what they want to talk about. You come here, you know they like racing. You know, if they run that type of car, they like late models, they like modifies, they like off-road things. You will walk in and literally be able to have a common interest with anyone in here. Even if you don't know anything about it, you will recognize some of these vehicles and be able to relate to them and easily strike up conversation. So making friends and having fun is the easiest thing about a community event like this. Who's your ideal guest and why would they want to be here? Our ideal guest is going to be anyone with a positive attitude that is looking to make friends. Very simple. Uh, there's classes here for the lowest budgets and there's classes here for people that want to spend some money. There's people that do things and their cars look like junk and there's people here that all they care about is how cool their car looks. So if you have any interest in racing and models whatsoever, or just driving, uh, I think it's the perfect place to be. Right on. Not to mention the, camar the camaraderie and the friendships you're eventually going to find here. Like I said, it's very unique, it, and we sp all spend a lot of time together. A lot of us even travel out of town together. We get hotel rooms together. We go to other venues together. It's honestly a very special place, at least to me, here yeah. in the community. No doubt. John, you've been racing since you're 13 years old, right? How did you get into that? Um, my mom was working a couple jobs. It was a beauty shop. And okay. right next door was a hobby shop. And uh, I went to a hobby shop and just, you know, something to do to keep out of her hair. And the owners all had a track and they kind of invited me over to it. It was it with the old Waterford Police Station. Kind of got hooked from there. I just started racing, and it kept me out of a lot of trouble too. What's one of the things that has been a, a good reason for you to stick around in the racing community? Why do you enjoy coming to events like this? Everybody gets along very well. It's more like a family here, and you know everybody's always been welcoming with open arms, and I just I enjoy working on them as much as I do racing them. And when I was that little kid at the track, I had a lot of the older guys that all helped me out and answered all my questions and I had thousands of them. And so and one guy, I don't remember him in his, or his name in particular, but I remember what he told me. What I teach you, you take it, 
and when you learn it and you know it well, you teach it to someone else. It's a great philosophy to live by. Paying it forward, so. Definitely. Every event that I believe exists has a peak experience. I sort of look at every event like a mountain. Mm -hmm. So do you think that the peak experience for you coming here has evolved over the years and is different from what a maybe eight-year-old or a 10-year-old would see as their peak experience in being here? Um, I think so, yeah. It's, you know, like for me, you know, helping everybody out, that's more now what I really enjoy. Of course, I love the race and going out there and trying yeah. to win and whatnot, but I get just as much out of helping the kids come up and, and do good and you know any of the other guys if they ever have any questions or anything, you know it's just it's helping people that's awesome yeah so that's very that cool. that's the that's the peak that's the peak when you get you know where you're at and you feel comfortable that you're good then pass it on help other people i think that's one of the best lessons i've learned so far mm -hmm. doing these interviews and, and meeting other people i really appreciate you all right no problem thank yeah. you yeah.